Uh, exploratory missions have been added. The Diadem, this is a new zone. These are open world areas. Well, I, I keep calling them open world areas. It's a new zone with a lot of floating islands, enemies you can kill, and you can get rewards that range somewhere between I-180 and I-210. Uh, that's kind of the range they've given us. I'm sure that there might be more item levels involved, but you can get I-210 gear from this. Um, so you can enter... I, I've explained this before in videos, so I shouldn't actually go into too much detail. If you want to enter with your free company, you can enter with anywhere from 2 to 24 people using your free company airships. Uh, if you want to enter via the Duty Finder or Ishgard's airstrip landing, it's 1 to 8 players in order to queue in. You have 90 minutes inside, and... And you're basically just, you go in there with the average item level 179, and you kill as many enemies as possible, complete as many objectives as possible, and get as many rewards as possible. You can also go in there as a disciple of land. Level 57 at least should mean you can, you can gather the items. And you're not necessarily gathering items, you're actually gathering an item that you can trade in for other items. And we'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, the group will not be treated as an alliance, but as three separate parties. Okay, that's kind of strange. Why would we queue in as an alliance and get treated as three separate parties? You know why that might be? That might be because we land on different islands within the Diadem when we first get there. So it'd be kind of strange. Uh, so after you beat the main story, you can do that. Uh, whether it's your free company entering or you're entering via the Ishgard landing area. You know, whatever. Uh, the Diadem is the name of the zone. Uh, hidden treasure coffers for slaying creatures and gathering rare items. While exploring the Diadem, players will find unique gear whose appearance and parameters are random. Up to nine parties can explore a single instance. After that, more instances will be created. Okay, so then it's just explaining all the rules, all the differences between them. Keep in mind, you can only enter hard mode through the free company exploratory missions. And hard mode doesn't have better rewards. It just has better drop rates and stronger monsters. All of the difficulties have the same drops. The only difference is the difficulty and the drop rates so the lowest difficulty is the lowest drop rates but it also has really weak enemies so don't think that you can't get the best rewards by own because you're not in a free company doing hard mode it just means your drop rates won't be as high if you want to enter um well let's see ish guardian however parties with less than eight players must adhere to the standard two tanks two healers and four dps that's interesting Oh, Mission Cerulean Voucher in their possession. This can be purchased from the NPC and the Pillars, which is right here on the map, in order to go. Okay, so that's uh, that's not so bad. Oh, it's 700 gil. And yeah, it costs 700 gil to buy one of those vouchers. So every time you want to go in a solo queue for this, it is going to cost you 700 gil. Not a lot, but it's kind of weird that they make that a, uh, a requirement. There are no role requirements when entering as a full party here, but parties with less than eight players must adhere to the standard composition of two tanks, two healers, and four DPS. Which is strange. I could have sworn that Yoshi P said it'd be one tank, two healers, and five DPS. Maybe he was talking about the Void Arc when he said that, because we know that's the setup for the Void Arc. All right, entry limitations. Uh, keep in mind, okay, so after you enter, there's a two-hour time limit before you can enter again. But keep in mind that the 90 minutes you're in the Diadem counts towards those two hours. So if you're in there the entire 90 minutes, it's only a 30-minute wait before you can enter again. But if you leave immediately, it would be a two-hour uh, roll. Now, when you enter via the Duty Finder, it does have greed only mode so every nobody can need people can only greed that's to prevent people from changing job constantly and rolling need on stuff it's still kind of strange to me i get it it just means expect to be greeting a lot of items that are coming from this place uh so when but when you go in with a full party you can decide what you want the loot rules to be loot master need over greed greed only whatever it is you want uh then explains the difficulty tiers uh you can change classes and jobs freely when out of combat in the Diadem. And according to an interview from Yoshi P, you do not get a long cooldown. You don't you don't get the cooldown on uh, on high cooldown abilities. You, you, all your cooldowns are automatically reset. Um, then you have treasure coffers. There's bronze, there's silver, there's gold. Uh, you can also get brass sky pirate spoils, uh, which can be traded in for goods from the spoils collector. That includes things such as materia, such as, uh, you know, materials that can be used for crafting, I imagine. Uh, you can also collect... You can also gather items in the Diadem as a gathering job, uh, and then you can trade those in for items as well. So gatherers have stuff to do, people who fight have stuff to do, uh, just know that it's, uh, it's going to probably be a lot of points in order to get stuff. I'm expecting it to be a lot of points. Uh, there's other rewards that you can complete by slaying certain enemies, getting bronze chests, catching fish, and these will actually reward tombstones of esoterics if you do them. It's mandatory for you to do the ethereal turbulence discovering at the beginning, and that is basically ge getting yourself the ability to fly. It should take about five to ten minutes to do that first step. Uh, so here's it explaining that flying mounts by attuning to ether turbulences, you can use their mounts to fly. But every time you enter, you'll need to reattune to them. 
Uh, then there's enemy difficulty. There's field objectives that you can do. Uh, you may explore, encounter. You may encounter constructs with various effects. Proper use of these constructs is essential to a successful mission. They don't explain anything more than that, so I have no idea what that really means. Maybe they're like buffs, extra HP for fighting certain enemies and whatnot. I don't know, though. They don't go into any more detail. Uh, there's shops and NPCs out in the DM where you can get your gear repaired, you can trade in your, your spoils, or you can get weather forecasts. Also, spirit bonding is faster in the DM compared to other areas for everything other than crafting or gathering. It's just for uh, Disciples of War magic. So uh, you can spirit bond a lot faster and get more materia through this, uh, through this game mode. Finishing exploratory missions, it gives you a little summary of everything you completed, how much time you had remaining when you left. And then... That's it. Then it just abruptly ends the section about that. So it looks like it's going to be fun. I'm actually really looking forward to this because the, because the rewards are the same. I'm hoping I can actually arrange things on stream to do things with people on Gilgamesh uh, where I can actually do these uh, mission, missions with them and we don't have to feel any stress. We can just go in on easy mode and clear things as fast as possible so we don't have to worry about the skill level of everyone in the group. It's just something we can enjoy as a community for fun. Experience points earned in the following dungeons, Dusk, Vigil, Samal, Airy, Vault, Creek, Ball. Level 51 to 60 should be a little bit faster now. I think Yoshi P said that if you do each of your roulettes and do each one of these dungeons like one time a day, I think it says he'll take 10 days to hit level 60 from 50 or something like that. I'd have to read the interview again to remember if I'm correct, but uh, this should make leveling 50 to 60 a lot faster. Parameters of enemies and mechanics in the following dungeons and trials have been adjusted. So with these all being adjusted, with Howling Eye, Dragon's Neck, and Chrysalis being adjusted, I wonder if I can solo them easier. <laughs> I have a feeling that my Astro, which can almost solo the Chrysalis now, will probably be able to do it after the patch. I can also already solo Garuda Hard Mode. So and Oh, Garuda Normal got nerfed. That's not Garuda Hard Mode. That's Garuda Normal. Aura Veil and Zamiel Darkhold. Wow, all this stuff got nerfed, huh? Okay, that's going to make leveling quicker too, I suppose. <laughs> oh, and also all the level 50 dungeons, excuse me for itching my nose, all the level 50 dungeons now yield experience points. Uh, they said that they, the way they calculated the experience points is something to do with how long the dungeon is expected to take. Um, so expect some of the shorter dungeons to not really reward that much and the longer dungeons to reward more. It's just a balancing act. Longer dungeons, more experience, shorter dungeons, less experience, about the same overall. Uh, they buff PvP experience gains, 600 for first place, 450 for second place, and third place is 300. Um, Great Cabal Library now has an item level sync on it of 150. Wow. Guess that means you can't be a level 60 in full 210 gear and just steamroll through it anymore. It's actually going to have some of its challenge maintained. Uh, that's going to piss some people off. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Pets will no longer enter combat. Certain enfeebling effects can now be applied to objects. And certain duties, do you know what that probably is? That's probably shit like Venomous Bite on the nails in Ifrit Extreme. Or certain dots on certain... Thank, just good, good. It always annoyed the hell out of me. Uh, they have a level 50 roulette and a level 60 roulette now. So the expert roulette is only the two new expert dungeons. The level 60 roulette is never reaping fractal. On one side, that means that a roulette's only two friggin' dungeons, which I hate. I don't like it. Uh, on, this, on the other point, it's two roulettes to get esoterics from. So I guess there is uh, a plus and a minus to both. And if I never want to do Never Reap again, I just have to never do the level 60 dungeon roulette again. So I have a reason to never do it anymore. Uh, the daily uh, duty roulette front lines had its PvP EXP increased as well. Uh, matching algorithm for duty roulette has been adjusted to reduce wait times. Interesting. See how effectively that works. Uh, if other tr party members choose to leave a duty while the add member feature is activated, the feature will be suspended. Interesting. Um, oh, and now there's timers. If you go and try to complete a dungeon while undersized party, it'll give you a timer. They didn't get to add the actual ranking system, but in the future they are going to add a ranking system where the fastest runs are going to be tracked and you'll get credit for being the fastest runner. Uh, display text for obtaining loot from instances has been adjusted in order to improve visibility. Oh, okay, so it's just way it's just way easier to see, because otherwise you had to scroll down before it would say that. Okay. Um, also, when you join something in progress, it doesn't let you know how many bosses they beat. Instead, it lets you know how long the dungeon has been going for. Uh, they changed the amount of law and esoterics and stuff you get. They buffed Aetherochemical to 120 tombstones of law. They buffed Never Reap to 100 law, but nerfed the esoterics down to 30. Buffed Fractal the same way. Buffed and nerfed Fractal the same way. Now, this is interesting. Red script items can now be gotten for tombstones of law. Granted, it's almost a full 2,000. It's 1,800. This should make the items a bit more accessible, and it should give us something to actually do with all that law that we get. So I expect this is probably the first of many steps to alleviate the difficulties of red script crafting. Even still, this isn't the 
you know, this doesn't actually make the crafting more fun. It just makes getting the materials to get to the end result a bit easier, which should overall reduce the price of these materials as well as uh, reduce the price of the crafted gear and reduce the stress of trying to get to the crafted gear. So I'll see how it pans out. I'll let a more experienced crafter express what this means for the market. I'm just giving my first impression of what it means. Uh, players can now finally you can get encrypted tombstones, carbon twines, and carbon coats with uh, with esoterics. Thank the Lord. I'm sorry, with poetics, the level 50 stuff. Uh, thank God, because leveling alts and then not being able to have like a good weapon was always so annoying. Thank God they decided to do this. Okay, on that note, they also uh, reduce the amount of poetics required for all the other stuff. So when you're leveling alts, you can fully gear out a lot a lot easier. Uh, they nerfed the, some parts of the Zodiac Weapon Quest line. It's easier to get guaranteed drop rates from the Zodiac Weapon Quest. Soul Attunement and Soul Resonance are now faster and can be done well in an undersized party. They uh, increased the Centurio Seal cap to 1,000 for a good reason. Because I'm sure you already know what this is about to say. A rank and S ranks are from in the old world now grant more Centurio Seals. The A ranks grant 20 and the S ranks grant 50 Centurio Seals. The HP of A ranks in 3.0 areas was increased. And you can now exchange Centurio Seals for Clan Mark Logs. They can also be exchanged from hunts, or they can also be gotten from hunts or dropped from hunts, for, if I'm seeing this correctly. And they can be traded in for Gob Twines, Gob Coats, and Wyvern Horns. It says Carbon Coats, but I'm sure that's probably a, uh, a typo. And a Wyvern Horn, which is basically a Null Mount. Yes, Null has his own mount now. So, the hunts are going to be super populated again for everyone who loved those. Uh, also, they made it so getting other, uh, like, soldier and poetics gear is a lot easier through, um, through allied seals. So these, like, all the costs were dropped for allied seals for all the stuff. I'll probably use that to level alts a lot more, so I'm actually pretty glad they did that. We got new items, new recipes. The hairstyle's not a recipe, just so you're clear. This is just, uh, the outfits themselves. Potency and recast of so the following medicines have been adjusted. I'm assuming that, okay, so... You know how these are only preliminary patch notes? I'm certain that this not having a follow-up, the potency and recast of the following medicines, how it doesn't actually say what medicines have been adjusted, is probably because they don't want people to panic over the weekend and try, and, you know, try to change it. Also, the item level default race gear has been increased from 1 to 5. I guess that's why that quest they mentioned earlier now has the item level of 5, and it's like probably super easy to complete. Uh, Emperor's New Fist was implemented. You can now die a lot of the old... Uh, a lot of the old seasonal stuff, uh, prerequisites for obtaining tools have been adjusted. Uh, following items can now be stored in the armoire. Following changes have been made to the armoire. Items from seasonal events can now be stored in the armoire immediately after being obtained. So I'm guessing, I don't know if that means that like now you don't have to wait until they specifically say, hey, you can put these items in there. I'm assuming that just means that if you if a new seasonal event comes out, you will automatically be able to put it in. I don't think that means, like, as soon as you get it, you say, does it want to go in the armoire? Which is good, because it's annoying to have to hold on to those items for, like, a patch or two before they implement it into the armoire. They also have uh, a new category for seasonal event garb. Tradable versions of the following dyes, pure white, jet black. All these dyes now have a, a uh, tradable version, but they're going to have a different name. I just don't know what the name is yet, because it won't be in the preliminary patch notes. Uh, following items have been added to the inventory of Calamity Salvagers, custom-made items. Uh, I'm assuming... I don't remember these. I'm assuming these are all the items that come from, like, the level 10 class quests. I think all of these. Something like that. I don't know. Uh, the Manderville items, the Southern Seas items. Uh, just if you've obtained these items before, you can now buy them from the Calamity Salvager. New crafting components have been added to the House of Splendors. Nice. Number of Red Gatherer scripts obtained from Rowena's House of Splendors has been increased. Nice. Number of items received when trading with the Splendors vendor in Idleshire have been increased. Oh. Wow. So, for the same exact trade values as before, you now get three times the amount of items. You know, I was going to wait for an, an experienced crafter to talk about the change before with the Law Tome Stones. I think that they'll be happy with this. It's probably still a pain in the ass for them, but uh, it's better. It's three times better than it was before. And the number of Red Crafter scripts required for the following high-quality items available for exchange from the Splendor Vendor. I hate that name. In Idleshire has been reduced. Oh, so you don't, it doesn't need as many scripts. Oh, so you only need one script now. Okay. I think these were all one script before. So I guess these are just one script. Okay. Cool. So that that should make red all right red crafting items a little bit easier to get. I have a feeling that in 3.2 that we're gonna end up complaining about whatever they do to the, the script system again because they're probably gonna implement like a purple script and it's gonna be the same bullshit that it was for 3.0 and it's I don't know we'll see I'm just being pessimistic apologies. 
Uh, let's see. Important changes. Master recipe book. See, this is the stuff towards the end where I'm not really uh, keen on it. Now, there are... Okay, recipes requiring a specialist crafter will be grayed out when corresponding. So you do need... So there are recipes that are going to require specialists now. Okay. They said they were going to do that. Um... I was curious how it was going to work, but uh, we'll need more information in the full patch notes. Uh, quick synthesis available for more items. The following quest duties and exchanges. They will now display the master recipe book or tombstone of folklore. Oh, okay. I get what they mean. Okay. I understand. I understand what it means. Uh, okay. That makes sense. It just lets you know right here on the right-hand side, like, if it needs a certain book and what book it is in order to obtain it. That's actually good. That's good for new players, so they, they don't have to wonder, oh, what the hell do I need to get this? They know now. They know where that item is obtainable. That's that's really good. Uh, search function has been added to the crafting log. That's really nice for crafters. It's going to be a pain in the ass to look through all those things. Master recipes have been divided into two categories based on the books that they're available from, uh, one or two. Item search was added to the gathering log as well. Uh, oh, and they're guaranteeing that players will at least get one, um, one favor item. So if you use a favor and you're like, you're like, oh, I'm not getting anything, you'll get at least one, which, you know, fantastic. It still sucks to only get one, but I guess it's better than getting none. Bunch of items can now be traded in or, you know, submitted for expert delivery, sold, desynthesized. That's a lot of friggin' items. Holy moly. Uh, following adjustments have been made to desynthesis. The skill value required to uh, desynthesize certain items has been alleviated. Success rate for low to mid tier items and low to mid levels has been increased. And the skill progression rate. And desynthesizing a rare item is now more likely to increase the player's desynthesis skill. Nice. New minion. Is that is that happy feet? That's happy feet. Oh my god, the devil. Okay, moving on. Uh, new mounts have been added. The Pegasus mount, which I'm assuming will come from Free Company Airship Exploration. I'm almost positive that's where it's going to come from. And there's the Null mount that we mentioned before. New chokeable barding. That's the Thordon barding. Um, we have the new camera modes, the idling camera, which basically uh, an idling camera works as a fixed point camera, which cycles randomly through the vantage points of other characters and NPCs in the vicinity of the player character. So it's just a nice extra way to AFK in between content patches. Okay, nice. Uh, I just have to type slash idling camera or slash iCam. Uh, in order to access it. There's also group photos, which will, uh, when doing a group pose, all parties involved will face the camera and repeat the last general or expression emote used. So that's just a way of taking uh, more in-tune pictures. It'll automatically line the emotes and people up, so that way everyone's looking at the camera, and it looks a lot nicer. Uh, slash group pose or slash G pose, and that will allow you to use the, uh, the group camera. Following achievement and titles have been added. They probably left this out for the same reason they left out the uh, other things. This is something we'll get in the full patch notes. Uh, following duties now count towards high-level full-party duty achievements. You mean they didn't before? Wait. What? Are you telling me these didn't work for that before? Okay. Um, that's a surprise to me. I'm going to move on because that's, uh, that's, a, that's, uh, that's a big shock. Unless I'm thinking of the wrong thing. I think I'm thinking of the wrong thing here. Because there's no way. Oh, this is just the total number of ones. Okay, it's not saying that these weren't before. It's just saying these are all of the ones that will increase that. Okay, okay. I understand. Uh, new retainer ventures. I don't really care all that much. Rare dies have been made tradable. Um, new rare dies that you get will be tradable. My bad. Um, they're adjusting experience uh, points rewarded have been adjusted. Like, eh, I don't really do much adventure, so I don't really care too much. Uh, players will now be able to use glamours for equipment that occupies multiple slots. So, for example, they show the linen cowl to put over the antiquated Creed Curse. Another good example would be putting the original Odin body piece that takes up four slots over an original body piece. So, uh, that's, that's actually pretty nice, uh, that we're going to have that now. Following changes have been made to the gear preview. Oh, you can now uh, use a try-on thing and actually save and delete the outfit. So you can try on multiple pieces at the same time. Uh, and you don't... That way, you're not just trying on one piece at a time. Uh, that's actually... I know a lot of people that matters a lot. I don't glamour much, but I'm glad that they're getting this. Because that's a big feature for a lot of people. Uh, the following additions and adjustments have been made to the character window. Oh, you can... Oh, it now tells you in the acquire titles tab how you actually obtain the title. That's, that's pretty nice for information. Um, they added a new Beast Tribe Relations tab. You can change that over to Heavensward. It'll show the new ones. Lords of Verminion tab was added to the Gold Saucer. Following adjustments have been made to the Recommendations window. Uh, for example, they added the Elite Mark Bills as one of them. Number of categories has been increased from 5 to 10. The Timers tab. Exploratory missions are in there now. The Estate tab for things like Company Projects. And Return Time for Exploratory Voyages are now there. That's real cool. Flying Mount Roulette has been added. 
enabling players to summon a random flying mount amongst the ones they own. That's nice. Players can now select which die to use if they possess two dies of the uh, two types of dies sharing the same color in the die window. Okay, that's. Oh, okay. This is so general purpose pure white die are the new tradable ones, and pure white die are the untradable ones. Okay, so I don't know why they didn't just tell us the names of them because it says it right there. Um, the color. Okay, so also now if a party member is out of range, it shows them as uh, grayed out, so you'll know that they're out of range and you can't target them. Okay, that's uh, that's a real solid change as well, uh, especially for new healers in the game. Uh, and as a ninja, also I can tell if someone's out of my goad range. So I like it. It's a good change. Definitely good quality of life. Um, you can lock your map to not close with the escape key if you want to keep it on the screen. The the map that you pull up, not the mini map. Uh, names for Ethernet locations. Oh, now you can actually see the names of Ethernet locations. Only took us two years. Uh, that's that's real nice. There's quest icons for the for the new job uh, quests now on the map, or for the initial Dark Knight Machinist and Astral Ocean, not the new ones, just the initial quests. Uh, markers for NPCs such as the lift attendant who move players between zones will now display following changes have been made to the mini map uh the direction marker will it will now display oh i guess that's the direction marker okay i get it yeah so if you're out of range it'll still show you where they are in the mini map it'll just show you a directional arrow instead okay and the colors of the mini maps have been made to improve visibility um new categories have been added they added all this stuff to the party finder thank the lord I don't know what took them so long, but they finally got around to it. A button to reset the roles you are seeking has been added. That's really nice. Um, and then let's see. Disable active help windows. Players can now use the following actions when riding a mount. Thank the Lord! We can we can use our gathering actions and shit while we're on a mount. Thank God, dude. These are pretty good. These are pretty good things to do now. Can use waymarks while riding mounts. Can I already do that? For some reason, I thought I could already do that. Uh, let's see. Improvements have been made to targeting display. New options are available. Yeah, and then this is all this stuff for, like, system configurations. I never mess with this, like, glare and whatnot and sound settings. Play sounds when the window is not active. All right. I guess being able to being able to tone that down is pretty nice for me as a broadcaster because I tab out quite often. Um, and then these are just all the new text commands that we were mentioning before. The new dances. The new uh, cameras and whatnot. Gear set list will open when using the text command gear set. New phrases have been added to auto-translate. In an effort to curb RMT activities, the number of friend requests players can send per day will be limited to five. Okay. I can ex I can get with that. I don't see how... There's probably some rare situations where that'll upset some actual players, but that's I guess that's a pretty good thing to prevent the RMT from adding friend requests. New music has been added. Any characters become unavailable due to a change in subscription or any reason. Information such as their appearance and level will not display. Uh, opening cinematic is now skippable when starting the game for the first... Best change. Best change in the whole thing. Holy moly. Page explaining one-time passwords was added. The PlayStation DualShock 4 controller can now be used on the Windows version. Nice. That You could use it before, but it didn't have... The keys were kind of off. Now without any sort of... I guess without any sort of outside, uh, like, you know, DS4 con uh, uh, controller or anything like that. Um, just any everything other than the touchpad is going to be uh, functional. That's real good. And uh, the client is now compatible... With Mac OS 10.11. Oh, they're starting to make fixes to the Mac version. I wonder if that means it'll work now. Somebody on Tuesday tell me if the Mac version actually functions now. It doesn't say it's back on sale, just that it's they made some changes. So overall, pretty big patch. Lot of good quality of life changes that should make the game more playable for your average player base. Uh, I'm looking forward to some of the challenges. I'm looking forward to some more community events with this patch. It seems like it's going to be a patch where those things are really possible. Where I can actually play multiple aspects of the game and actually be rewarded for them especially with the gold saucer because i wanted to enjoy that but unfortunately the rewards were too low to motivate me which is why i only do my cact pots pretty much every week now looking forward to getting back into holding events like chocobo races on gilgamesh uh doing things like the diadem on gilgamesh so if you're on gilgamesh and you come by the stream uh, I'll have more details for that after the next patch actually comes out because I need more information before I can definitively say when those things are going to be. But anyway, thank you for coming by. Thank you for watching this video. Sorry it was a real long one, but honestly, it's a long patch, so it had to be done. So I'm going to actually, I think, split this video into two parts so that way it's a little bit more digestible. Uh, this will be the second part, of course, you're watching right now. But thank you for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and let me know what your thoughts are on the patch 3.1 preliminary patch notes. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, take care.